request I have. If you shout during singing, yeah, and you amen during singing, please don't get quiet on me while I preach, all right? And uh, it helps me when you help me, all right? And I, I gotta have two things to preach. One of them, you gotta have the Holy Ghost help me. The other thing is, it doesn't hurt when the people of God help me. You know much about the nation of Israel, you know that there were two major crossings in their existence. Matter of fact, the nation of Israel started out coming out of Egypt, which was a type of the world or a picture of sin. And God sent a man of God by the name of Moses. And Moses came in and the people of God were led out of Egypt by this man named Moses. Now you know the story. How did Moses let them out? The Bible says that they came out with a high hand. Now that can be one of two things. Of course that can mean the hand of God. And I believe it does. I believe that God brought them out by his hand and led them by but I believe it also to me that while they're coming out of Egypt, they had their hand raised high and they were thanking God that they didn't want to be the mother of sin anymore. Friend, can I tell you, I understand why you shout tonight. I know why you praise God tonight. Because if you want to know me Standing down on the banks of the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army was on one side. The Red Sea was on the other side. Mountains on either side. There was nowhere to go. They began to turn on the men of God. They began to say, we've been better off. We'd have died in Egypt. We've been better off. We'd have stayed there. Boy, ain't that just like us? I know there's some badness in that crowd.
you listen to me tonight. When they got to the Jordan, God had already parted the Red Sea. When they got to the Jordan, they got to that place, they couldn't cross over. Now they're not being led by Moses. Now they're being led by Joshua. And God says to the people of God and to Joshua, I like this. As I was with Moses, so, Lord, have mercy, so shall I be with him. Here's what God said. God said, I, Lord, have mercy. Somebody better help me. Instructions. 
And listen, he said, if you're going to overcome the overwhelming, you got to do what I'm saying. I will give it to you. Uh, I hope, I hope, I pray God will give it to you like he gave it to me. All right? Look back in your Bible with me, please. <laughs> Chapter number three. The Bible says when Joshua rose up early in the morning, and they were moved from Shadow and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel. Look down just a little bit, verse number three. And they commanded the people, say, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. I'm going to give you the first way that you can overcome the overwhelming in your life. Number one, watch God. Watch God. Now stay with me just a moment. You got to understand, Israel, hey, they were following after the Ark of the Covenant. In the Old Testament, that Ark of the Covenant was a picture of what was to come. You can't put God in a box. But yet that box contained the Shekinah glory of God. And here's what Joshua said. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of your God. In other words, don't you do anything until you get your eyes on God. Now listen to me tonight. I got to move. I can't stay up here all the time. But I got bad knees and wrecking motorcycles. I'm going to walk this way, all right? But let me give you something to understand. Understand that the reason a whole lot of people can't have any victory in their life. The reason so many church members have no victory in their life is because they don't set their eyes on the right things. Now I'm going to tell you right now, you come in this church tonight and you keep watching people and you keep watching stuff, you'll never, ever, ever overcome the overwhelming in your life. Anybody ever come to me and say, Preacher, I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray for me. I got my eyes on Jesus and it's ruining me. I've never had anybody come to me and say, Preacher, I'm reading my Bible and I'm a praying and I've got my eyes on the Lord and it's messing up my life. I don't know what to do. I've never had anybody at all to say that. I've never had anybody Right? I've had a lot of people come to me and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm so discouraged. Yeah. That's right. This happened at work. This happened at home. Somebody didn't shake my hand at church. God help us, bunch of babies. As a Baptist preacher, I'm so tired of diapering and pacifying grown ups. You didn't come tonight to get a pat on the back. You didn't come tonight to get a headset. You came tonight to worship God. And to get to God. And to serve God. That's what it's all about. Some folk can't come to church and get any help from God because they can't never get their eyes on God. Can I get a witness? There are those who just can't even get their eyes on the Lord. Yeah. And if you don't get your eyes on God, he said, watch when you see the ark of the covenant of your God. When you see God, you can begin to overcome the overwhelming in your life. Let me tell you something. You remember when Peter walked out on the water? Now, we can't be too critical. Number one, he did get out of the boat. Right? And a whole lot of us ain't never even got out of the boat. Right. And second of all, he did walk on water. And I, if I tried that, I'd drink. He did walk on water. And he never got in trouble until he took his eyes on God. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? I want you to understand, when you get in a mess in your life, it's when you take your eyes Preacher Rock, 
in hell. Yes. 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 Teresa, so many people defeated. That's right. Yeah. right. Teresa, so many people in their lives just live defeated lives. It's because they always have their eyes yes. on something besides the Lord. That's right. That's right. And that's easy for us to do. Yes. Don't think it's not. That's right. You start going through it. You know what I've learned about the devil? Well, I'm talking about I've learned this in passing church. Yes, the devil can have one or two rotten apples. That's right. oh, yeah. But have 300 good ones. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll get you to worry yourself all night long. Yeah. Yeah. Over yeah. some rotten apple. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. truly, you really bless the God yeah. and you got goodness yeah. all around you. Look what he says, verse number three. You got a King James Bible over here? I'm sure you do. Can I borrow that thing just a minute? Sure. I don't have my glasses on, so it may be vain. It's vain. That's <laughs> <laughs> another new stamp. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm headed back toward them. Thank God for Walmart and $10 for three pairs. So I need them everywhere. And I got them everywhere. I got them everywhere. I mean, the rapture, they'll be floating waiting on the sky. I got them everywhere. <laughs> He said, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God. Here's what the writer of Hebrews said. Of course, I believe that to be the Apostle Paul. He said, looking up in Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, I told you, I'm preach all. I've got three points I'm done. So Keep your eyes on God. Watch God. You're never going to overcome anything in your life. Unless you learn to look to God. How do you look to God? You got a book in your hand you need to read. You got knees you need to get on. You got a preacher you need to listen to. Word of God, that's how you watch God. Amen. Right? Well, you know, I tell some of you coming here tonight, get a good glimpse of Him. Yeah. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Right. Right. I used to look at churches, I'm preaching and think they don't right. like me or I wonder what's wrong with them. The problem was they ate something, did just upset their stomach, didn't have a thing to do with me. Yeah. Have a thing to do with me. Quit trying to read everything in that has nothing to do with me. Yeah. I'm opposing yeah. vain imagination. Yeah. It's hard to come to God's house and worship God if you don't have your eyes on the Lord. Watch God. Now this gets real good. I'm telling you, and I'm not saying because I'm preaching it, that's already written before I ever started preaching it. It gets real good. Watch this now. Here's what it says, verse 3. They commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the cover of the Lord your God, and the priest of the Levites bearing it, watch what he says. Then you shall remove, Lord, have mercy, watch. Yes. Then you shall remove from your place yes. and go after it. Now watch. He said, number one, watch God. Yeah. But he said, number two, walk with God. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to give everybody something real deep right here. You get a hold of what I'm getting ready to say. And I'm saying deep as in being kind of funny because it's very simple, but we miss it. Watch this. Here's what he's saying. Are you ready? Get this statement and put it in your memory for the rest of this night. Don't move until God moves. Are you listening? Now I'm going to say something now. God gets blamed for a whole lot of stuff that he doesn't do. Ladies, I enjoyed your testimony. I felt God on it. But I'm going to tell you something. I've been in some churches. Go ahead, brother. People stood up. It wasn't a testimony. It was a test of baloney. Yeah. 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 God was moving in the service. Boy, it was awesome. Then all of a sudden, somebody stood up, killed everything in it, yeah. died it. We don't need to hear about how bad. We know how bad you were. Just stand up and brag on yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. When God's done for you, sign over that feet track. When God's done for you, you want the whole damn chance you get. You can't the whole chance you get. You can't the whole chance you get. Watch this. 
said, now listen, fellas. He said, the first thing you got to do is you got to watch God. Keep your eyes on that ark. But when it moves, it's going to go in the Jordan. Watch this. Oh, have mercy. I'm like, come on, shout in a minute. Let this big man here help me out, all right? Watch this now. Watch this. I think mean, you just scared me, sister. Watch it. All of a sudden, he says, when that ark moves, guess where that ark's going? That ark's getting ready to go. What's your word? Where? <laughs> <laughs> My heart's getting ready to be in what's overwhelming you. Yeah. 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 You get all the way home and say, yeah. <laughs> If I get that way home, I can go to the side of the road. Then I say, Hallelujah! I want God to move on! Honey, don't move until God moves! Hallelujah! favorite people in all this world that have a long time now is Dr. T. Gross. Yeah. Brother T. helped me a lot when I was a young preacher. Yes, and I'll never forget one day we was at a gas station in Weaverville, North Carolina, way back when I was in yeah. And I'll never forget, I was standing outside and he was pumping gas in the car. This is before he was diagnosed with cancer. He was pumping gas in the car. And I'll never forget it. He looked at me as a young preacher and he said, Brother Chris, I would give you one word of advice. Because like, I always ask him, Brother T. Help me. I, I don't know what to do. Help me. So I'll give you one word of advice. Mm -hmm. He said, don't you ever do anything yeah. unless you know that God's moving That's first. Right. Amen. Amen. Huh? Yes. Are you listening? Yes. What I'm trying to say, I can give you testimony right now in Statesville, North, Statesville, North Carolina. I can give you, I can give you testimony right now in Statesville. I wish I, and I'm not going to do it until I'm shaking and bragging on what God's doing now. If you get a chance to come down to Jubilee next week in Calvin, I wish you'd come down and you get to hear a little bit of what God's doing and how God's sending in what His heart and leader seen me and sent in. Hey, in the middle of this economy, God What you can overcome Amen. if you keep your eyes on God, Amen. watch God, yes, and you walk. Yes. Now it's getting ready to get quiet. <laughs> Walking with God don't mean you go running in here every time you got a problem. Come on. Right. Walking with God don't mean that you get the spare tire out of the trunk and then put it back when you don't need it. what happened. He said, listen, and you can look back in the passage. I, I, I'm paraphrasing, but it's in the King James Bible. He said, when you're walking with God, watch what he says. He said, keep your distance. Yeah. Yeah. He told him how far to stay away from the ark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know how we, Lord have mercy, I'm getting ready to help somebody. Do you know how we get in trouble? We get in trouble when we try to help God. Yes. 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 You ever try to do that? Yeah. You ever open your mouth and your brain came in gear later? Yeah. <laughs> you, ever, you ever tried to help God? <laughs> Have you ever noticed you're getting a bigger mess when you try to help God out? And if you just be quiet and pray and wait on God not to take care of it, it won't make sense. Bless my first church, it's hard. I started when I was 20. I was like a bull in a china closet. <laughs> Listen, I ran people off, ran people up, ran people down. It was crazy. <laughs> I mean, wild as a buck, man. Crazy. I looked at that later on and I thought, shoot. If I just let God do that, I think it'll work better. <laughs> right? Now listen, I, I know everybody loves this verse. And I'm not trying to mess you up on your verse. I know everybody loves, he'll never put more on you able to burn. That's a good verse. Yeah. But it's taken out of context most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Don't, don't get mad at me because I like the verse.
works. Yeah. But it's taken out of context. Yeah. It's got to do with temptation. Right. And with every temptation, talk about the trial, the testing of your flesh. With every temptation, God will make a way to escape. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I've had more on me than I'm able to bear. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Good. Can I get a witness? Right. I've had more on me in my life than I can handle. But well, here's the good thing. Like that little fry saying with the footprints in the sand. When you don't see but one sand. That's when God will teach you out. Watch God. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Now look at it. Go back down to me. Oh, this is good right here, man. Amen. Look what it says. He said, yeah, verse 4. There shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits per measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way forward. Here's what he means. He can never walk through the Jordan. <laughs> and I don't think I can walk through the Jordan. If God wasn't in it. Don't you want, can you imagine them? Oh, there's some three men so strong. Here they are. Ark of the Covenant. And the priest stepped down that ark of God in that water, and all of a sudden water starts going. Fish over here twirling on each side. <laughs> Not even a mud pup. Do you know what? I, oh, Lord, have mercy. Have, we have church now. Listen. Yeah. That's still got to be scary, though. Yeah. Because when you start seeing God go up there in that Jordan, you look it up on either side of you, you know, them stupid Bible come to them real smart people. Well, it must have been the flood. It must have been the dry season. Only dry thing about their spirit. Amen. 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 Some, people, some people cripple too high for crutches. Yeah. Yeah. Some people don't have no toy in the hand. Yeah. 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 All of a sudden that heart starts going across the water, yeah. across the dirt. I can see a couple of fellas on the other side. There it goes. <laughs> what are you going to do? Joshua should keep an eye on me. Right. He said, I'm going to watch God. He said, well, is that there a little ways we think we'll do? He said, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah. I'm getting, Lord have mercy, I'm getting ready to walk through yeah. what's overcoming me. Yeah. I'm, getting, yeah. I'm getting ready to get past. Yeah. I'm getting ready to get past. Yeah. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Yeah. They step in. Yeah. He said, Don't get too close now. He didn't think about it. I said, Let me help y'all. God, don't, uh -huh. you don't need the help. <laughs> God can handle it. Yeah. We don't sit in a pot and belly booty. Hey, we don't serve some guy in the cave that ain't getting sick. We don't serve somebody standing on the street corner selling us a flower. Yeah. We serve the king of kings. Yeah. Tommy's going to get quiet right here. He did say there's one other thing you got to do. Yeah. Don't get quiet on me now. <laughs> oh, let's get ready to get quiet. Verse number five. Joshua said to the people, there's that word, oh Lord, there's that word, sanctify yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen, look, he's getting, every boy folk getting nervous. Oh, yeah. All that preacher's getting ready to talk about that sanctification. I'm trying to hold you away from me, Lewis. Come on. You know what legalism is? It's adding anything apart from the blood of Jesus yes. as a way to go to heaven. Amen. 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 Legalism is saying you got to be baptized to go to heaven. Yeah. you got to have a higher cut a certain way to go to heaven. you got to have a certain clothes to go to heaven. Come on. Jump. They were going to go to But once God saves us, you don't see people at McDonald's wearing a Hardy's uniform. That's right. Once God saves us, He sanctifies us. Amen. You will never overcome in your life the overwhelming unless you live separately from the world. That's right. Sanctification will begin on the outside. That's right. 
Right. Sanctification begins in the heart. Amen. You got to separate your heart to Christ. Amen. You got to say, I belong to Him. Yeah. I belong to Him. Yes, I do. Amen. 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 Now listen to me tonight. There's somebody who's been, I guarantee you. Now I got one more step and we'll go and I'm done. Don't listen to me. There's somebody who's been tonight. You walked in being honest. There's something in your life that's overwhelming. Yes. Amen. 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 I've been doing this a long time. I have never seen the lights of God's people in the fire. Go ahead. Yeah. I have never seen it as I'm seeing it today. You know why I believe that? I believe the devil's backed in the corner. I believe he knows it's coming to an end. He don't know the dying time, but he's sensing. He's sensing. It's coming up, and I believe he's doing everything he can so that he he wants us to quit. Amen. Don't quit reaching everybody. Right. He does. Uh -huh. I got so much I want to say. You can't say in two days. Don't you listen to me? I want you to understand. Sanctify me. So, in other words, he said, you stand apart. Yeah. Let God do His work. I'll send the Jordan's part. Yeah. <laughs> now, third thing's got to happen if you're going to overcome the overwhelming. Number one, you got to watch God. Yes. Right. Number two, you've got to walk with God. Right. Number three, you got to stand back and witness God. You will be amazed what God can do. Amen. Yes. 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 What's your name? You talking about where God brought you from? Yeah. Isn't it amazing that you're sitting here? Isn't it amazing that you run into the altar, sitting here and shouting and toting the Bible? And, and isn't it amazing? Hey, y'all didn't do that. Pastor Holder didn't do that. We really are the real Jehovah Witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm the witnessing every day of my life. What Jesus did to me. I'm the witnessing every day of my life. I'm the witnessing every day of my life. Oh, yeah. 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 I got a little boy stands up in my church and every I get to come up and sing. Mom Day sits on second row. His mom and daddy were told to abort him. He, he'll be a vegetable. He, he'll, never, he'll never even function. You need to abort him. And they called me one day. I was in the United States. They called me one day and they said, Preacher, we need some advice on what we need to do. So they, said, you, they said, Preacher, you know, we don't need abortion. I said, No. She had said, Preacher, the doctor won't do certain things about seeing what's going to happen. I don't feel like I'm going to do it. I feel like I'm going to go another way. She said, What do I need to do? I said, Tell doctors, leave the room. Yeah. She said, Do what? I said, Yeah, tell them leave. I said, Pull the curtain. I said, get out on your knees and you ask God what God wants you to do. I said, let me know what he's saying. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That little lady bowed down in the intensive care of the children's ward at Brenner's Hospital and she began to pray and seek God her and her husband. They decided, you know what? We're going to bring that little boy in the world. Ain't no way we're going to take him. Listen, he, God gave him life and God told him what he can take. Hold his head all the way down to the skull. Ooh. Doctor said, "Ain't no way we'd be able to close it up." Where, where, they, where they kept, went through this surgery and this surgery, he went through this, that, and the other. His mom and daddy said, "All we've ever prayed for him, thank God, just happened to be normal." Yeah. A week she come by and she said, "Brother Hazel, God really over answered prayer. Oh. Said the boy's too normal. Don't <laughs> 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 got to fight in school." <laughs> So much boy, it's unreal. A week he got him walk up on the platform. He loves to sing some of the Rolling songs. The title Rolling stuff. He walked up on the platform and he got to sing it. Y'all y'all singing part of it a while ago. He got to sing it. That's on the that I mention. Miss Tyler wrote that I mention. And he got to sing that song. He got that like he wasn't here all ago. And I said, and you know what I did? I was just 
I was just witnessing God. Amen. Amen. I went back on the left over there, about three quarter way down there. There was an old boy sitting over there. I've been his pastor a few years now. First time we ever met him, his truck was wrapped around a tree about a mile down the road from our church. He was so drunk, he didn't know where he's at. Only thing wasn't crushed in the whole vehicle was him. Somebody witnessed to him. He came the next Sunday morning. He got saved. Wife got saved. Kids got saved. I went back over saw another week. Back there worshiping God. I'm just witnessing God. <laughs> church where we're at. We're in the roughest part of states from North Carolina, right across the railroad tracks. I'm telling you, man, it's hard to believe a church has grown from 130, 40 to sometimes four and 500 people. It's hard to believe we're in the worst part of town. We don't have drive-by visions, we have drive-by shoes. It's the worst part of town. You know those chickens up, kid, but it's rough. Don't you listen? A little while back, God burned our heart. We, we, can't, we need to deal with you, do some stuff. We built a new gym, we built a new family life center, new Sunday school, but we need to do more. Our Spanish church is growing. We need to do more. And there's land right beside us. And uh, they come up for sale. You would fall. It was in Brooklyn, New York. They want so much for it. You know? Come find out. There's about six different family members that own it. You imagine how wonderful this is going to be. Right? So anyway. So anyway. One day, a guy came down and said, Well, Josh Church, be rest of it. I was out of town. My associate pastor said, Well, I talked to the preacher and all that. So he talked to him and we let go for a while. Come back again. Said, you know, nobody's offered anything to him about it. I said, I was in meeting someone. I said, look. I said, we don't have it right now. But I said, you tell him that I'm getting $60,000 for it. So I tell him, I'm getting $60,000 for it. Mm -hmm. He came and stopped back by. He said, I'm talking about overcoming over with. Yeah. So you gotta understand, we're still at this time supporting 200 missionaries around the world and $200,000 a year fake promise. Yeah. Plus the staff of five full time. Yeah. In this economy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I pastor folks, not rich folks, just folks that are faithful and give. Yeah. Everybody yeah. doing their part. Yeah. Now I want you to watch this now. He come back a few minutes later. He said, uh, he said, listen, he said, I. I talked to my brothers here, called some Georgia Duck, and they said, we'll take it. I said, wonderful. Tell them, wonderful. Had a man walk in my office. Something didn't happen to him. Imagine how long ago Vietnam was. Yeah. Right. Something had happened to him in Vietnam. Hadn't heard a word since. Got a call from the government. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much they sent him, but he brought me a check for $30,000. Is that right, church? Put that on the way. Next day, next day, lady walks up to the church. Her husband had passed away in the hospital, and it was the hospital's fault. No doubt it was their fault. Wrong medicine. She wouldn't sue him. She said, I, I'm not going to do it. Hospital called her out of nowhere. We appreciate what you did, but we still feel like we owe you something. She walked up to me, put a $20,000 check in my hand. <laughs> Sunday morning I walked in the building. We started taking up half about fifteen more thousand dollars right then. <laughs> Took the money to, I'm talking about overcoming over well. Yeah. Took the money to the guy for the land. He's not saved. Doesn't go to church. He said, Preacher, he said, I, I appreciate you doing it. He said, I just want you to know. We're gonna give ten percent of it back to the church. <laughs> I told you I didn't preach on y'all too easy. Preach to his brother. <laughs> some places I go in, I can't wait to quit. <laughs> and some places like y'all, I don't want to quit. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you listen to me. Don't you listen. If you're here tonight, you got to understand. Watch this. It's an illustration I've used in different messages. Watch this. And some of you folks in Westfield have heard it. When everybody starts in the Red Sea, everybody's on one side. Everybody starts in Jordan, everybody's on one side. Well, they come out, out of Egypt. That's pretty mean. I'm strong. That means some of them are going to be halfway. Yeah. While some of them ain't never got stopped. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That also means that some of them are going to make it across. Yeah. While others are still in the middle of them. Yeah. 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 Watch this. In the middle of it, 
it can get discouraging. In the middle of it, it can get tired. In the middle of it, it can get overwhelmed. But if you can just get a good word from God who's an old lady baby, when my people go through things. It does, man. I hate to see them lose jobs or somebody they love diagnosed with cancer. And God don't always deal with cancer. We know that. He don't always do it. Sometimes He gets a lot more glory people going through it than out of it. Yeah. I've always heard this. Sometimes God, Sometimes God takes you over it. Sometimes God takes you through it. He does. You say, well, that's just a cop out. Say, no, it's not. <clears throat> Friend, can I tell you something? I got over this a long time ago. I'm trying to quit, Friend. I got over this a long time ago. To this I used to have people come to my office all the time. They would say, Preacher, why do good things, do well, bad things happen to good people? And I used to try to give an answer. But I'm going to be totally honest. I don't know. Right. Amen. Just to be totally honest with you. If some of you walked up to me tonight and said, Preacher, I'm going through this in my life. I'm tithing. I'm getting missions. I'm trying to live for God. I'm trying to do right for the Lord. It's like every time I try to do right, it seems like it just goes opposite way. Yeah. Amen. And you say to me, Preacher, help me understand it. I might have to say to you, I don't know. That's right. Amen. That's good. You're right. Here's how God helped me. Y'all ready? You sung about it. What do we really deserve? Did you not sing about a speck of dirt? That's not right. Let me ask you a question. What do we really deserve? Right. I mean, I'm going to heaven. Ma'am. Yes. Walls of jasper, gates of pearl, streets of gold. Sit down with Fanny Crosby and sing Blessed Assurance Jesus. Some of you, you shout, but you battle. Yeah. 
That's right. That's good, preacher. Yes, sir. Some of the best people I got, preacher. They'll wait during service, wave their hands. Yep. Nobody else knows what they're going through. I'm a pastor. Sometimes I know what they're going through. Amen. Now look at I, I'll finish this one. We got a little lady in our church named Carol Robinson. has got four girls. Four girls, three teenage girls, and one little one. Ain't been coming along long, but she's very, very close to my wife. They've been real good to us 10 years ago. We moved, moved to the station. <coughs> Carol is a beautiful lady. She's been from Burnsville, North Carolina. She's a beautiful lady. Real, real little, I mean, I'm talking about real petite little lady, sweet and cotton. Several years ago, she was diagnosed with a lymphoma cancer. Thank you, baby. She was diagnosed with cancer, and um, it's bad. We're talking about stage four or something, it's ugly. And they said, look, our only hope is wide open, hard as we can go, chemo ready, so we just got to go as hard as we can go. At this time, she was in her early 30s, three teenage girls. She started going through this stuff. And I know, listen, I've been preaching, I've been doing this a long time. I know everybody don't come out of it. Yeah. 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 I know that. Because God has a divine purpose that I don't know. But I'm praying to the extent of Him. And anyway, I watched her. She started chemo. Now, you ladies know what it means for you to look nice. Yeah. Right? Ladies, that means a lot to you. You, yeah. you like your hair to look nice. Yeah. And you, you, you like to look nice and presentable. I mean, any, any good lady, good Christian lady, especially, really likes to look nice. Right. You know, and, and nothing wrong with that. As long as you look nice for your husband, you do anybody else. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was free. Right. <laughs> but don't you listen to me. Miss Carol started going through that stuff. Started losing her hair. Beautiful brown, long hair, beautiful lady. Started losing hair. What well, along, every bit of it's gone. During this whole time, she's never quit singing in the choir. She's never stopped raising her hand. She's never, I'm talking about going through chemo. Can you hardly walk up to the choir sometime? One Sunday, I come in and go up on the platform and look at the choir. She's sitting on the front row, and her hair's blonde. Her hair's blonde. And I look at her, and I say, Miss Carol, you know, I said, you look real nice today. My wife said, I'm tear running down her face. So you look real nice today. She said, Preacher, I always wanted to try this cup. <laughs> and she said, she said, I'd get cancer for it, I ever do it. <laughs> 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 she kept on shouting on the front row. <laughs> <laughs> kept on praising.